picking up where we left off, now let's consider a function in terms of theta. And then this function is going to be equal to this horizontal force, so 3mg uh, sine theta cosine theta minus u mg plus 3mg sine squared theta. So we're going to consider this function. So it seems like this is like the, uh, so let's say we have the ball here. So this part is the normal force that's acting in the horizontal direction, and then this is going to be the friction. But then this is not this is not exactly the friction because friction only grows as much as uh, is required in order to counteract this normal force. So this is the maximum possible amount of friction. So as this particle keeps sliding down, if we consider this function over here, so we know that uh, the the net effect is that the, this ball is going to be stationary. So this friction is going to keep varying according to how strong this natural, uh, this uh, normal force is. But uh, for this function over here, because we know that friction always has to be smaller than this, than this expression, this is the largest possible friction. We know that if we graph this, this is actually always going to be negative. So it's always going to be somewhere down here. And then the most extreme case is when uh, so there's going to be a certain theta where this actually hits the a certain maximum. So this is going to this function is going to keep varying, and then it's going to hit a certain maximum, and then maybe go back down again. So in, in order for this ball to not move, we need to make sure that this maximum is always smaller than equal to zero. So that means at a certain theta where this function is maximized, uh, if this maximum is equal to zero, that means the friction is just enough to counteract the normal force. So that means this thing will never move, which is what we're looking for. So we're going to do just that. We're going to try to find a maximum, the theta where this whole function is maximized. So let me just copy out the function that we have just now. And now for the sake of convenience, I'm going to let this be equal to sine 2 theta. So uh, this directly follows from the double angle formula. g plus the mg sine squared theta. So as always, to find a maximum, we just take the derivative. So sine 2 theta becomes cosine 2 theta times 2. That's just the chain rule. This is a constant. It goes away. So again, we use the chain rule 2 sine theta cosine theta. And then we let this be equal to 0, because that's when the maximum happens. That's when the the, the derivative becomes zero. So that's equal to zero, so we can take away some of the useless constants. So you see this two, this cancels out, so we have three cosine two theta minus six uh, sine theta cosine theta u. And then once again, I'm just gonna use the double angle formula again. So instead of 6, it becomes 3 sine 2 theta. So 3s, they cancel out again. So you see that uh, I can arrange the terms like this. And then if I divide the cosine over, it becomes tangent 2 theta. And I divide the mu over, over to the other side, this becomes 1 over mu. So the required theta that we need is such that tangent 2 theta is equal to 1 over mu. So you can kind of imagine this 2 theta. So this uh, this is the theta which maximizes this function. And that theta is set to be at a certain value such that it corresponds to this triangle. So you can just take tangent 2 theta, let's just let's divide by this. So uh, going back to this diagram, we know that the condition for this uh, thing to not move is that when it reaches the maximum, it has to always be smaller than equal to zero, right? So we just need to substitute this con condition into this formula and let that be always smaller than equal to zero. So once again, let me just write out the formula again. So sine 2 theta minus mu mg. And this time I'm going to use the other double angle formula. 
So this tells me that sine squared theta is equal to 1 minus cosine 2 theta divided by 2. So I can substitute this. So sine squared theta becomes 1 minus cosine 2 theta divided by 2. And then we're going to substitute our 2 theta inside. So we know that our 2 theta corresponds to this triangle, right? So sine 2 theta is 1 divided by this. And then cosine theta is mu divided by square root of 1 plus mu squared. And then we know that this must always be smaller than equal to 0. So under this condition, the, uh, the ball will never move. So once again, we can take away the repetitive constants. And uh, we're going to have to do a bit of uh, simplification here. So let me just write this out so, uh, so that I can follow what's going on. So uh, you can see that we can actually take away, we can combine this term with this term. So there's a 3 over 2. So 3 over 2n. So there's a minus, there's a minus sign. There's actually a theta, a th uh, I mean a mu and another mu here. So it becomes 1 plus mu squared. So we've considered these terms. And then we have a capital M mu, and then a 3 over 2 mu small n. So let's just write out a space. So I'm just going to uh, kind of flip this to make it simpler. Now, uh, we call that in our original question, we are trying to find this ratio. So let's just focus on that. Oh yeah, also don't forget that this should be an inequality. So uh, let's try to divide both sides by the big N. So this is the ratio that we're looking for. And now we can group the big N together, I mean the ratio together. That is smaller than mu. So now that m divided by n must be always be smaller than 2 mu divided by 3, 1 plus mu squared minus mu. And then you can actually uh, rationalize this. And then so you just multiply the numerator and denominator by uh, square root of 1 plus mu squared plus mu. And then so if you prefer putting the junk at the top, it will look something like this. So this is the ratio that we need. So this is essentially the answer. And then in our question, we know that mu is equal to 1. So you can just substitute that in. So we know that this ratio is always smaller than 2 over 3 times square root of 2 plus 1.